Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Rhiannon, and today we are covering the five witchy tools that I hate and I wouldn't purchase again, at least for the magical purposes anyways. I find them completely useless for my personal practice. I know everyone else is going to be a little bit different and that's okay, but for myself and my practice, these are no-goes. So let's get into it. Number one don't come for me in the comments you guys is the witch's wand it is completely useless for a magical standpoint in my opinion when you really get down to the alchemical purposes of a wand and the reasoning for it this is a directing tool to help you learn to direct energy or to help guide energy in a direction whichever you choose and for me, I feel like this is just an extra little tool. And if you need that visual stimulus, then okay. But for me, I feel like I have enough power going on in my hands that I don't need anything extra. My hands are my tools. Um, although I'm not going to be completely unbiased and I'm I'm going to say that I love the aesthetic of a wand and there's nothing wrong with that. I would definitely collect these as cute little collectible items for aesthetic purposes only and I would not be opposed to have be having multiple different wands hanging up on my wall for my altar room for fun uh, and decoration but as a means of an actual tool I am not I'm not purchasing them to work into my practice. This is actually made out of oak and it was, um, it has a clear quartz on the bottom. This was um, a gift out of the witch's moon box that I received a few years ago and I thought it was really cool because my Celtic birth tree is the oak tree and I had just learned that um, when I started diving into more of my Celtic side of things and looking more into a paganism version of like remastering my craft and i was like oh whoa i just learned this and they intuitively just like sent me like a oak hand carved like wand that's awesome and i keep this for the reminder that you know my connection to my birth tree and all of that and it's a cool tool in symbolism but for me, it's more just aesthetic and it's not worth the purchase. I would definitely suggest learning with your hands first and if you need that visual stimulus and you can't seem to learn to direct energy with your hands alone, then okay, go out and try to buy or make your own wand better yet. You have more of a connection to it. Number two is the chalice. Now, a lot of us, I feel, get sucked up into wicca the second that we think witchcraft and we start exploring it uh, because there's just so much um that is saturated within the witchcraft community coming from wiccan creators and that's great for them but i like to see more of the traditional witchcraft knowledge out there where these things really stem from um, because these extra tools aren't necessary and I feel like it's just sometimes I'm not saying the Wiccan faith is doing this at all but I'm just saying in the wider witchcraft community it can be a bit of a money grab and that isn't cool in my mindset a chalice has no place in my my workings um, this is actually my great grandmother's juice cup um, it's like hand blown glass and hand painted. It's super duper cute and I do keep it on my altar. Right now I have it filled with an oil offering. Um, however, I don't drink from this cup and I know a lot of people use chalices alongside a cauldron um, and many other different tools in the Wiccan setup. To re The cauldron is um, much like the chalice representative of the womb and female energy but for me i get all of that from my cauldron i don't have any necessary reason to have a chalice and drink from it um, and i don't do that a lot in my own practices to begin with so 
I don't have a lot of like libation and all of that in my practice to begin with what that is physically e eaten that is physically eaten or drank um, so and I do find the cauldron to be more useful and versatile so I use a cauldron instead um, although I do keep this on my altar now um, in the last few weeks because I didn't want it to get damaged it's the only one that I have from her collection of cups when she was alive and it reminds me of her and it reminds me of my ancestry um, and I'll leave it for like offerings um, that leads me to my next one is an offering bowl. I don't see the point of having an offering bowl. Leave an offering of a drink. Leave an offering of a piece of food if you want to do that. Just leave it on the altar. It doesn't need to be in a bowl. It doesn't have to have like a specific place for it. Um, I put a lot of my food offerings in my cup if I don't want it scattered all over my altar. But you don't need to have both. Um, I think if you use one or the other that's more than fine especially when you're not working within like the wiccan like way of setting things up and their their whole like setup it's not something that's necessary i think you should take your practice and customize it to yourself and what works within you and what makes sense for you and your cultural like history and what's practical in your everyday life the next tool that I don't find at all useful but is scattered all over like social media is the witch's cupboard. Um, I'll put a picture up here over here for you to show you what it is but you see it everywhere and for me yeah it's cute but it's also just another piece of clutter if it's not actually going to be useful. I find you don't you can't you can't store the net amount of herbs or tools or all of your tools to begin with even if they're miniature size which is completely impractical um, in a cupboard like that small use your closet <laughs> like or like use your kitchen better yet if you are not sharing your space or your family's okay with it like get a cupboard for yourself that is filled with your herbs and your tools or um, you know designate a specific drawer in your bedroom or in your altar room wherever you're able to find space for your tools like to have like grown-up size tools that are not like toy play things in a small little cupboard it just makes no sense to me um yeah it's cute and collectory and all of that but to store everything for your living practice in something the size of a jewelry box doesn't make sense and I don't like it. <laughs> They're cute, but I, I don't think I I could store my items in it. It doesn't make any sense. Next is the quintessential like aesthetic book of shadows or book of mirrors. It you don't need to grab this right away as soon as you're in your practice. Grab a notebook and start filling it with information. Your knowledge is gonna grow and change and over time you have that creative block sometimes when you have like a beautiful book of shadows where you don't want to wreck it or have to change it over time it stops you from learning and being able to record your practices and being able to look back on them so for me i enjoy the look of the books um and that's fine and i do have two of them i have one is a spell book and one is my um my book of shadows my book of mirrors whatever you want to call it for my path that's more pink and based and has some of my like my more specific witchcraft path like laid out on it um but like for the beginning you don't need to have that just grab a notebook don't waste your money right away a lot of people don't have the money in the beginning for these types of things um, if you want to invest in that later awesome I have a beautiful book from Charming Bear Gifts and they're on Instagram finally and on Facebook so if you definitely want a beautiful book of shadows then definitely check them out. They're hand pressed leather and recycled paper and they have a beautiful velvet um, insert on the inside and a bookmark which is a, a ribbon bookmark with a tassel on it and they're gorgeous. I have one that's a chakra lady. Um, meditating on the front and then my spell book is um, 
a little turquoise one that matches my chakra lady that has the turquoise on top um, of the cover and I think it's beautiful but I don't write in them every day and that's something you're going to have to know that you're not going to write in those types of books every day those are books that you want to have that are cemented spells that are cemented recipes and practices that you've tried over time um, these are like the good copies. They're more like a grimoire, okay? They're a collection of like flushed out spells and rituals that are like solid. Start off with a notebook. Save yourself some money. Um, this one's kind of like I'm teetering on um, where you don't need, like you don't need it. Um, but it's okay to want it. You know, I want it too, but don't stop yourself from actually exploring your path when you can buy like a notebook and or like a three ring binder and fill it with information and you can keep changing it out um, from there. So um, definitely just don't stop yourself from getting it if you don't, if you do want it, but don't think you need it because you don't. Last one is gonna be a little bit controversial, but that's okay because I'm feeling a little controversial today is the wheel of the year. And I know a lot of you are going to say, how can you be pagan um, if you don't celebrate the Wheel of the Year and the holidays? And I do, but I don't just take the Wheel of the Year at face value for what it is, as it is presented to us through the Wiccan faith um, and through overall paganism now, um, because it doesn't make sense and for me I feel it's a little bit appropriative especially coming from my background and my culture I am Irish Scottish Celtic descent and for me the wheel of the year really is two wheels of the year and um, they stem from the cross quarter days and the fire festivals this is where the wheel of the year comes from the Wheel of the Year was inspired by these festivals and cross-quarter days, um, which are the equinoxes and the solstices and then the fire festivals of Irish Scottish heritage and culture. Um, so for me, using a Wheel of the Year that was inspired by my own culture doesn't make much sense. Um, and I do celebrate some of them, but I just call them by their original names, by their names that make sense to me, and I also customize the Wheel of the Year for myself. So make sure when you guys are starting your pagan and witchcraft practices that you're actually looking at things and not just taking things for face value because that's just everything that everyone does and it's a popular thing to do. The Wheel of the Year needs to make sense for you. It's your personal calendar. And if your practice doesn't stem around that or if your ancestry doesn't stem around those things, it doesn't make sense. You just practice it because all these people on Instagram are practicing it. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Don't do that. Just do what feels right to you intuitively, you know? Learn about the holidays. But then also learn about the holidays from where the wheel of the year's holidays stem from, especially when it comes to your own culture and your own history and then the cultures that you are finding interesting and wanting to learn about. If you are wanting to adopt a certain type of paganism and you are going to, you know, convert to that, awesome, learn about those histories and celebrate the holidays in the wheel of the year within that culture that makes sense to you not just because everyone's celebrating a stara or a bialtana and you know um they don't even know how to pronounce it you know like it just it drives me a little bit crazy um sorry it's a little bit of a um pet peeve there um you know Learn how to pronounce the holidays, the true pronunciation of the holidays. Don't just appropriate uh, holidays that have been like adopted from another culture and, and turn into a religion. So now it's like it's a solidified thing and that's okay. But you need to also make sure that you are um, being like authentic as well, you know learn the holidays learn how to actually pronounce them and also learn the holidays that make more sense for you in those placements and to make changes 
I actually am making a video all about this and that's going to be coming up next week all about the history of the Wheel of the Year and the Celtic Wheels of the Year and um, how to make your own Wheel of the Year and go from there and I think it's super exciting I have a whole template printed out for you so that you can make your own wheel of the year um, but you don't have to use mine you can make your own as well or um, you know just be creative and come up with your own but if you'd like you can use my template it'll be listed in the video's description when I post it and yeah that's today's video I love you guys so very much thank you for sitting with my ramblings those are the five witchy tools that I cannot stand, at least at face value. And I will see you guys in my next video. Stay wicked and I'll see you later. Bye!